Where I am with the prioritized threats facing humanity right now, there are only two. One is climate collapse, uh, the collapse of the jet stream, global warming, in which we know of an absolute scientific certainty that we have baked a four degree centigrade rise above baseline, baseline being the start of human industrial civilization, carbon emission. Uh, and human life goes extinct after two degrees centigrade. It takes a longer period of time. Four degrees, and now it looks more like five, with 25 positively reinforcing feedback loops, such as the, 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 the melting of methane hydrates in the, in, in the seabeds, or the thawing of Arctic tundra in Siberia that produces columns of methane, a greenhouse gas 100 times more dangerous than carbon dioxide in its initial release. Uh, than, than, than CO2. The North Pole is now warmer than it has been in 140,000 years. This is an irreversible trend. We've reached and crossed multiple tipping points with that. Not all of the feedback loops are reversible. But I have a dear friend, Guy McPherson, who's a professor emeritus uh, from the University of Arizona, who's a climate scientist, uh, evolutionary biology, uh, who is just an amazing guy who walked a similar path. He walked away. Uh, who has compiled now irrefutable, uh, multiple peer-reviewed scientific studies showing that we got four degrees cooked in and calculated showing a human extinction by the year 2030. The science is there. It's not being covered by mainstream. We, we, we live in a world that's been taught to deny everything. That's what's producing the bizarre weather all over the planet that we are seeing. The jet stream is meandering and collapsing, uh, which is sucking Arctic cold way too far south, but it happens in bands. So you have a biblical drought in one band, and then you have you know, torrential rainfalls in another as the jet stream gets weak. And climate collapse, climate chaos, what it does is it makes it impossible to do things like permaculture, which is one of the things that I love more than anything else. Permaculture, one way of looking at it, is thoughtful and protracted observation. But it implies that by observing and interacting with the land, and doing permaculture on the land, learning how to harmonize all of the things in your ecosystem, that you're going to have a stable climate in which, to do, in which that observation has some value. Climate collapse takes that away. Plants cannot adapt. Animals cannot adapt quickly enough. We just had uh, 100,000 head of cattle freeze to death in, uh, in uh, South Dakota which was, they were grazing on summer pastures one day. They hadn't grown their winter coats yet. They were hit by a blizzard and they all froze to death. It was not malfeasance on the part of ranchers who had lived there their whole lives. They couldn't adapt to the climate. We had 20 some inches of rain in Boulder, Colorado, biblical flooding there, not too far from here uh, recently. Plants cannot adapt that quickly to a changing climate. And what people who are disconnected from the earth don't understand is if the animals die and if the plants die, we die. There are too many people who have been hypnotized into believing their food actually comes from a grocery store. It doesn't come from a grocery store. It comes from Mother Earth.